And, and I think we need to be aware of the fact that the last year has seen a, a dramatic uptick in open white supremacist, white nationalist violence. We know that these are, are violent organizations. We know that they're breeding violence. We've seen it in Charlottesville. Um, we've seen it when Milo supporters have opened fire, uh, you know, on you know on others, and supporters of Richard Spencer, um, you know, have encouraged violence uh, at protests. Um, and we need to, you know, at the same time, we're told that that these are just ideas in the in the great you know marketplace of ideas to be debated and discussed. Um, but we need to realize is that you don't discuss white supremacy, you don't debate it, you destroy it, you out-organize it. Um, and that's something that we need to be doing on a, on a much broader level um, while we're trying to grapple with what's gone on in this, in this instance, um, because we see people being radicalized. Of course, if they were, you know, Muslim, they would be, you know, it, the question of where were they radicalized has become a bit of a meme, uh, and yet we don't ask this question when it comes to these radicalized white youth who are, you know, who are involved in this mass violence, who are in a discussion groups. This is the second, if this is true about his white supremacist ties. This is the second alt-right school shooting in two months, the last one in New Mexico, by someone who was actively involved in the Daily Stormer, one of the most violent right-wing anti-Semitic websites, uh, you know, on the, on the far right. Um, and this, this association is direct, um, and yet we had Trump eliminating almost all oversight of, um, you know, scrutiny toward white supremacist groups. Even Obama had been cutting that funding. Um, and so we know that the government is not, has no interest in prosecuting and undermining white supremacist organizations, and that, or, you know, organizations on the ground are going to need to do that themselves. Mm.